So for a typical test, you will be asked to work out the reactions, the shear force, the bending moment, and possibly predict the curvature, like which way this will actually deform. So we'll go through this example. So we have two point loads, a nine and a 12 kilonewtons. Then we have a UDL, uniformly distributed load of 18 kilonewtons per meter. Then we've got our two reactions, A and B. Our distances is one meter, five meters, and two meters. But those values are put into millimeters. Just take care again where you've got sort of things in uh, millimeters. You know, we've got our UDL is in meters, kilonewtons per meter. The steps are for this, you've got one, you've got the reactions, two, shear force, three, bending moment, and then four, we'll look at the, the, um, the contraflection. Contraflection, is that a C there or an X? I can't remember. The reactions, I'll take moments around A. So I'm taking my moments around A, and I'm going to say that everything going around anti-clockwise is going to be positive. So I've got a hold of this point here. So if I've got a hold of that point there, this 9 will be taking this beam around anti-clockwise. So this is um, our distance 1. So we're doing everything in meters, one times nine. So that's taking it around that way. Our RB is also taking it around that way. So we've got, it, from there you've got a five times by RB. And then we've got, going around the other way, we've got seven times by 12. And then from this point here, in terms of the UDL, we've got our force. So remember, our, we've got this formula, um, Moment is force times by distance. So for a UDL, your force is the 18 times by 5. And then the distance, it acts halfway. And all of that equals 0. RB should be 60 kilonewtons. Then if you did the sum of forces vertically, say that everything up is, is positive. You've got your RA going up, you've got your RB going up, then coming down is nine, your 12, and 18 times by five. And all of that equals zero. So you can work out that RA is 51. You can do a check just to make sure that your, um, your answers are correct by doing a sum of moments around B. And that will find RA. And, and you can check against, against that value there. So now we have our reactions. So we've got 51 and 60. So two, we'll do the, um, the shear force diagram. I'll draw my shear force diagram here. So I'll draw a line representing zero. And I'll just say everything going up, up is positive and everything coming down is negative. So this is my shear force diagram. Um, so yeah, the question was, should that be a minus here? So if I have a hold of this point here at A, that nine there would send it around. It would twist this beam around that way. So it would go around this direction. And I'm saying that going around that way, it's gonna be positive. This RB would also take it around that way. 
so therefore it is positive. It's a very common mistake that if um, when you have a force on the opposite side, like normally we're just used to having a reaction on this end and then looking that way, but when you have a force on the other end, um, you just got to remember that you just got to remember are you looking at anti-clockwise or clockwise? So that's why that is positive. Is that okay? So the ne this one here, um, negative, because if I've got a hold of this point, that force there will be pushing down that way and will take this beam around that way. So therefore, it'll be negative. Yeah. It's always useful just to stick your finger there and just imagine the beam twisting with the, um, the actual forces themselves. So shear force diagram. Um, when Barry Wormsley um, covered it, you can either sort of cover uh, cover over the the you know the, the whole beam and then reveal it. And as you reveal it, you can draw your your forces. So I'd be sort of I would have twelve, and I would have sixty, and I would have my um, my UDL. Or I can cover from this side, and I could start off by coming down nine. So if I came down to minus nine, there because of of this force as I'm coming along, I've now got my RA, which is 51. So there's no change, no other force until I reach this point. So I go up 51. So, and so I go up to 42. And for a shear force diagram, if you have a point load They're vertical lines. If it's a UDL, you have a linear line. That was for the, um, the shear force. Like a little bit later on when we do the bending moment, when you have a point load, the diagram is a linear line. And when you have a UDL, it's a parabola or a curve. So these are, these are the, um, this is for when you're trying to draw out your shear force or your bending moment. So in terms of my, my UDL, I've got 18 kilonewtons every meter. So every meter, I've started at 42, now I've got 42 take away 18, and then take away another 18, another meter in, and then take away another 18. So I'll keep on going down until I reach this point B. And it's a, a, a linear line, and that takes me down to minus 48. So that's the same as saying it would be um, this 42 take away 18 times by five would get me to minus 48. Then I've got my second reaction, which is 60. So I now go up and my value is 60. That takes me up to 12. And then I carry on along. There's no other forces until I reach the 12. And nicely, when you get to the last one and it's a 12 and it comes down 12, you know that you've, when you reach zero, or you know even if you're like 0 0.001 or something, like that, then you know that you've done your shear force diagram Correct. Now, if I did start on that side, I would have brought, I would have come down with the 12 and I would have had a mirrored shear force diagram. Personally, I'm not that bothered whether you have one way or the other. As long, the most important thing in terms of shear force is when you come to design a beam, you need to know what's the maximum bending moment. You want to know what's the maximum shear force. Then you can design a beam. And as far as we're concerned, for this beam, we design it for a the, the maximum shear force is, uh, is 48 kilonewtons. It's important to know where your shear force passes zero. So where shear force equals zero, it equals uh, maximum bending moment. So it crosses here, here, and here. So, so they're sort of the, the three locations. And we'll be working out the bending moment at, um, at each of these points.
but where is this location? So we could call that <coughs> distance there Z. Z. So we've got this 9 coming down. We've got 51 going up. And then we've got 18 kilonewtons per metre. And after Z amount of 18, it'll bring us back down to zero. And we can write a little bit of a little bit of a formula to try and find zero. So we've got nine coming down, 51 going up, and then we've got 18, 18 times by this distance Z. At some point will give us zero shear force. When you work that out, Z is 2.3 meters. <coughs> so the point where it crosses zero is 3.3 um, is meters from the, from the position of the, the nine kilonewtons. So we've got Z is 2.3. Next we'll draw the bending moment. So we know that we've possibly got a maximum bending moment at shear force equals zero. So drawing again, I've got my zero line. Actually, I'll draw it a bit higher so we can see the whole thing. So that's... That's the zero. So we've got a zero line. Bending moment, once again, you cover over you cover over the beam. So we've got moment is force times by distance. So and what you can do is that at point zero, we've got there is a nine coming down, but the perpendicular distance is zero. So at that point, we start off at zero. And if we come in one meter, so it's um, at one meter, we've got nine times by one. So in terms of our diagram, we start off with zero. Then we've got a <coughs> linear line <coughs> goes up to nine kilonewton meters. Then if we come in another meter, so at two meters, we've got our nine times by. So we're imagining that we've got a hold of the beam here and that's rotating around that point. So we've got nine times by two. And then we've got um, yeah, nine times by two. So we're saying that everything going around that way is positive. Nine times two, we've got RA, which is 51, going the other way, 51 times by one. And then we've got our UDL plus 18 times by one. That's my force times by one over two. That UDL acts halfway. So that's my UDL force. You can figure out that what that is. I haven't got a, an answer for that. You can shout out the answer if you want. What you will find is as you go along each meter you'll just be multiplying an extra meter times by the 9, extra meter times by the 51 and then it'll be more UDL. The shape that you will end up with is like that. So you know we've just done a, we've just done a, um, a two meters in, so you can work out what that is. This will be our maximum point where our shear force equals zero. Like if we were, because we know that that distance there was three point three. So when we worked out Z, two point three, we know that that distance, the max point, is three point three. So if we work out bending moment at 3.3 .3 meters, 
And again, we were saying that everything going around that way was going to be positive. So we've got our 9 kilonewtons times by 3.3. And we've got plus our UDL times by 2.3. That's the force of the UDL times by 2.3 over 2, which is the perpendicular distance. Take away the, the reaction. And that equals uh, minus 39.99 kilonewton meters. Goes all the way along, all the way around. You can work out all of these individual values. To work out, if I, I'll just bring it down just a second. To work out the bending moment at this point, we can just cover over and consider everything to the right hand side. We got 12 times by zero is zero. Two times by 12 is 24. So we know that this is going to come, we know that this here will go, start at zero, 12 times by one is 12, 12 times two is 24. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you go from the left hand side across to the right or, or, the, or the other, you should end up with the same diagram However, your diagram might be mirrored. This is the correct way to draw the, the, the bending moment where you're supposed to sort of draw the, the, um, the, t the tension side on the bottom. So if this, if this beam's under load, it'll be in tension underneath in compression, tension underneath in compression at the top. But it doesn't matter, in my mind, if you if your dra if your drawing looks like it doesn't matter if it looks like that. What is important to me is that you've worked out the maximum bending moment, and that's what you use to choose a beam. So we got a, a maximum shear force of forty eight. And our bending moment is 40. And then you can just pick pick off a beam from the, from the charts. If if we continued going all the way along, so and by the time we get to that point there, by the time you do nine nine times by that distance, you're 51 times by, and your UDL times by that distance, you'll find that you've gone back into the same the same location that you had your nine. And then when you continue along, that will drop down to um, to zero. So do do the um, do the math. See see what your drawing looks like. It's very it is very difficult for um, to try and guess the shape of um, of your bending moment or your shear force. Uh, I, I, all right. Um, oh, the area area method. Yeah. If if you have because uh, sometimes um, in when you've done sort of physics or applied maths, people might have been shown a different method. And there are different methods to approaching this. Um, I'm quite happy for you to, um, to use your, the method that you've been um, shown. Um, it's the same like with trigonometry, you know, whether you're using sine, cosine, or you use the sine rule. Um, I'm quite happy for you to use any of those. Right, for this very last bit, so I'm nearly done. Um, the question is, is where does your bending moment equals zero, okay? Where does bending moment equal zero? Because wherever it does, it changes um, the contra flexion, it changes from a sad face to a happy face, um, or you can call that a, a hogging shape or a, um, in a, in a in a sagging. Um, so how can we work out um, these locations? Well, if, we, if I just draw in these forces again, so we've got nine, we've got 51, we've got um, 18 kilonewtons per meter. It's, and that's 60. In terms of um, where it's past zero, it's in between the 51 and the 60. So it's, it's round about here and here. 
that I need to write a formula for. And so if, if I had that covered over and I was imagining this beam bending around this point, right, if I call that distance x, and that's one meter, so I have the distance is, is nine <coughs> times by one, one plus x, and then you've got minus 51 times by x, and then in terms of the UDL, we have, um, it'd be plus 18, the force is, um, is 18 times by x minus one. Um, oh, there, sorry. Um, not just times by x, sorry, it's times by x. It acts halfway, so it's times by x over two. So we, we end up with a, um, a, a quadratic a, a equation to, to solve. Like if you multiply all of that out, we end up with, if you want it, well, if you wanted to simplify it, you end up with 90x squared minus 60x plus 60 equals zero. If you solve that using your quadratic equation, yeah, you're not given this. So if we got, plus 60, plus or minus. So again, that's your quadratic equation. You'll end up with a value of x equals 5.4 and x equals 1.225. So again, this is using quadratic equations. Now what that is telling us is that if I was to take those positions with my, um, with my beam, it would mean that my, this will curve. So that's pushing down, so it'll bend downwards, and it'll be a nice happy face until I reach this distance, 1.225. And it becomes a sad face until I reach 54 then I become a happy face again. So that's the last part of um, a shear force bending moment and the curvature. So wherever you have um, a point of contraflexure, which we identified again was 1.225 and, and 5.4, that's where it's changing from a sad face to a happy face from um, Hog to sag. <laughs>